Fox 61 News at 10 starts now. Tonight at 10, monkeypox in Connecticut. The state reporting its very first case to the virus as cases continue to grow across the country. What residents need to know tonight. Plus new developments in the deadly mass shooting at a 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois. The suspect is officially charged and we'll take a look at what he's facing. Plus a Fox 61 exclusive tonight. A mother turning tragedy into a teaching moment for others this summer. Her message about water safety after her son drowned one year ago. But we begin on the weather watch, tracking the remnants of rain across Connecticut. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Fox 61 News at 10. I'm Sarah Sanchez. And I'm Ben Goldman. A bit of a wet evening across the state, no matter where you were. Our Hartford City Cam, take a look, catching the rain coming down pretty steadily earlier this evening before those showers moved on out. Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank here now with the first check of your forecast. Rachel, where do we stand now? Yeah, the question, how much rain did we get? Not enough. And yes, the rain is starting to move out. There could be a few leftover stray showers, but the areas of steadier rain have moved on. And some people writing in saying, oh, I've barely got anything at my house. And others saying, all right, at least the ground is a little bit wet. We'll take what we can get. This is summer rain for you. It's hit or miss by nature. In Stafford, a little downpour has just gone by. Ashford, Eastford still seeing a shower. One by Granby heading back into Windsor Locks and another one just entering Litchfield County. And if we widen out, if you look to the west, there's not much additional activity, but a few leftover stray showers as we head towards daybreak. But most of this will be gone by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. We should be dry, but some of the ground might be a little bit damp in northern Connecticut when you wake up in the morning. Right now, temperatures are in the 60s to around 70 degrees. The temperatures do not move from here here. So it is going to be a warm and humid night ahead. It's also a little bit breezy out there. The temperatures have just flatlined. So again, they are not budging. So it'll be a warm and humid night tomorrow, though. The humidity slowly drops back. So you're going to wake up and feel it when you step outside the door. We'll start with temperatures in the low 70s. By lunchtime, temperatures are in the low 80s and we'll see high temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, not just inland, but for the Connecticut shoreline too. It's going to be a hot day right down to the beaches. 88 for Branford, 88 for Guilford, 87 for a high temperature in Norwich, middle 80s in Mansfield and the Hartford area. Also looking at temperatures in the upper 80s. The cooler spots will be in the hills, Burlington, Torrington in the lower 80s as we head through the day tomorrow with less humid conditions by afternoon. A bit cooler to finish off the work week. We'll talk about that and another chance for some showers in your full forecast, guys. All right, Rachel, thank you. Well, all new tonight, it is official. Connecticut has its first case of monkeypox. The Department of Public Health is providing more information about Connecticut's first reported case. The patient is from New Haven County. He's between the ages of 40 and 49 years old. We know he's isolating at this time and he is not in the hospital. Fox 61's Alicia Machado is live in Hartford tonight with more from health officials about this virus. Alicia. Yeah, well, Health Commissioner Dr. Manisha Juthani says the virus is typically spread through close skin to skin contact and those who are diagnosed typically have relatively mild symptoms. Now, she says with Connecticut's first case, that person was stable enough to isolate at home. Monkeypox detected in Connecticut. The clear message right now is that the risk to the general public is pretty low. We do need to be alert and aware. A man in his 40s from New Haven County, the first detected case in the state, according to the Department of Public Health. We're told the patient is in isolation and has not been hospitalized. Officials could not say where the individual contracted the virus. Health officials say monkeypox can spread through close skin to skin contact with an infected person for a long period of time or prolonged respiratory close contact in some cases. If you have an unusual rash, if you have been exposed to somebody who's had monkeypox, if you've traveled to a country where monkeypox cases have been identified, these would be things to be worried about. In terms of the general population, I don't think you need to be overly concerned. Some of the signs of infection include fever, swollen glands, and a rash. Dr. Juthani says testing is primarily done by swabbing a lesion and sending it to the state public health lab. In a statement, Health and Human Services Secretary Javier Becerra said, we are working around the clock with public health officials in states and large metro areas to provide them with vaccines and treatments to respond to the current monkeypox outbreak. 
break. Dr. Juthani says vaccines are available for people in Connecticut who are doing testing and for people who have had close personal exposure to an identified case. Now, the federal government has ordered more than 4 million doses of the vaccine to respond to the monkeypox outbreak, according to HHS. We're live in Hartford tonight. Alicia Machado, Fox 61 News. All right. Thank you, Alicia. Another small plane crashes in Connecticut. This time, that plane comes down in a wooded area out in Terryville. These photos show where that plane came down into a Boy Scout camp in the Terryville section of Plymouth. The pilot was the only person on board, and he wasn't hurt. No campers were affected by the crash either. The camp says no programs were impacted. First responders scrambled to the scene to find the pilot actually getting himself out of the plane. We only had a single phone call reporting of a possible um, plane in danger, a low flying plane. So as we're heading here by the air prior, of course, we we're waiting to see if we get more phone calls, which we never did. So we said, oh, OK, maybe it's just a, a plane that was flying low. The last 30 years that I've been chief, We've had, I believe, seven or eight plane crashes. We um, saw him just about leaving the plane, so we knew we didn't need any heavy equipment or ladders or anything, so then we just assisted him out to EMS. The FAA is now digging into what caused that plane to go down suddenly. Well, this plane crash comes just days after a small plane came down on the Quinnipiac River in New Haven. The pilot of that plane radioed for help after experiencing engine trouble. When the tower informed him to try and land at Tweed New Haven Airport, the pilot indicated that he wouldn't make it. He ended up making an emergency landing right in the water. Luckily, the pilot, his passenger, and the couple's dog all were not hurt. A Milford woman is dead after crashing her car into, into a utility pole. Police say it happened Saturday morning near the intersection of Meadows End Road and Lucille Drive. Police say the driver, 84-year-old Emily Wood, veered across the road and slammed into that pole. She died at the hospital. Any witnesses are asked to call police. A Windsor man is under arrest after police caught him with a stolen catalytic converter. Police set up a sting operation with a local business that had been targeted in prior thefts. Officers tracked down a stolen converter to an address in Windsor where they arrested Timothy Coffey. Police say they found a second catalytic converter at his home. He's charged with fourth degree larceny. To Waterbury now where a man's accused of impersonating a police officer over the state line in Massachusetts. Police in Holyoke, Mass, arrested the 51-year-old man from Connecticut after a woman told police the man claimed to be an undercover cop and was allegedly trying to get her into a back alley. A good Samaritan tried to step in and break it all up before flagging down an actual police officer to arrest the suspect and take him into custody. State police have released their final traffic stats for the 4th of July holiday weekend. This extended weekend proved to be far less deadly than this year's Memorial Day weekend. The number of traffic-related deaths went down compared to last 4th of July as well. According to state police, there were over 6,400 calls for service. State police responded to almost 300 crashes, two of which were deadly. There were almost twice as many people arrested for DUIs this year compared to last 4th of July weekend. Half a dozen firefighters were taken to the hospital after a fire at New Milford High School this afternoon. Officials say the fire started on the roof of the school and then spread inside. A number of the crews from surrounding cities and towns were brought in to help battle those flames. Those six firefighters have since been released from the hospital. This comes after another roof fire at the school back in December. To Hartford now, where fire officials continue to search for the cause of a fire that ripped through the now former Sigourney Market. The fire department says the building on Ashley Street was demolished Monday. The two firefighters that were brought to the hospital because of that fire are expected to now make a full recovery. Well, new at 10 tonight, it has been nearly a year since the deaths of two teens who drowned in the Farmington River. But their memories are not being forgotten. 17-year-old Anthony Nagore and 15-year-old Lucas Brewer were found after a days-long search on July 19th of last year. Tonight, a Fox 61 exclusive, the mother of one of the teens has an important message to send to others this summer. Fox 61's Gabby Molina, live in Farmington now with her message. Gabby. Ben, you might remember that last July was very, very rainy and conditions on the Farmington River were dangerous. And the water can get dangerous very quickly, which is why 15-year-old Lucas Brewer's mother wants everyone going out on the water to be extremely careful. 15-year-old Lucas Brewer of Plainville was loved by everyone around him his family, friends, and teammates. He played football, basketball, he loved swimming. 
If the sun was out, he was outside. His life was cut tragically short last July when he and a friend jumped into the Farmington River to swim. We had had storms and the water was, was really high and running rough. Conditions so dangerous, it didn't matter that he had been there many times before or that he knew how to swim. Lucas was a, a great swimmer. He was a strong swimmer. And like two weeks before that, we were in the pool and we were just amazed at, at how long he could stay under or the, the quickness that he could move. That's why his mother, Glenda Brewer, wants to raise awareness for water safety, making sure people know to take caution when they do go out on the water so that other families don't have to go through what hers has. I never, I never want to read it again or have somebody out there looking for five days again. Even if it changes one, one jump, that's what I want it to do. If it makes just one person think before they jump. It's one way she's keeping her son's memory alive. This year, Plainville Pop Warner created a scholarship in his honor, which Brewer says she plans to continue. And Plainville High School now teaches Lucas's legacy. And it'll continue every year. It's writing a letter to someone you appreciate or have helped an act of kindness. A year ago, Brewer says she was asked what her message is to other parents, and she says today, it remains the same. To make the memories, because that's real, that's, that's all, that's all we have. A memorial bench has been created and placed here along the river. His family will be unveiling it next Friday the 15th at 6.30 p.m. If you're interested in donating to the scholarship fund in honor of Lucas, we have information on how to do so on our website, fox61.com. Live in Farmington, Gabby Molina, Fox 61 News.